Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today for May 12th, 2024. Glad that you are with me. Today is Mother's Day, National Limerick Day, Chronic Fatigue Syndrome Day, Fibromyalgia Awareness Day, International Awareness Day for Chronic Immunological and Neurological Diseases. Let's go ahead and get started. First with a centering breath prayer. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We are illumined by the brightness of his rising. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Death has no more dominion over us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O Lord our God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism you have poured out your grace upon us and claimed us as your beloved people. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to love and serve you always, and to love and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our reading for today is Acts chapter 23, verse 23 to 24, verse 27. So remember how yesterday's reading was super long? Well, I did yesterday's reading and part of today's reading. So we're just going to go with it. It'll be okay. All right. <laughs> Listen for God's word. <laughs> then uh, the centurion summoned two of the centurions and said get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for caesarea with 200 soldiers 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen also provide mounts for paul to ride and take him safely to felix the governor he wrote a letter to this effect claudius lysius to his excellency the governor felix greetings This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them, but when I had learned that he was a Roman, I came with the guard and rescued him, since I wanted to know the charge for which they accused him. I had him brought to the council. I found that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him during the night to Antipatris. The next day, they let the horsemen go on with him while they returned to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he belonged to, and when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. Then he ordered that he be kept under guard in Herod's headquarters. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney, a certain Tertullius, and they reported their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullius began to accuse him, saying, Because of you, most excellent Felix, we have long enjoyed peace, and reforms have been made for this people because of your foresight. In every way and everywhere we welcome this with utmost gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. We have, in fact, found this man a pestilent fellow, an agitator among all the Jews through the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, so we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn from him concerning everything of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the charge by asserting that all this was true. When the governor motioned to him to speak, Paul replied, I cheerfully make my defense, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this people. As you can find out, 
It is not more than 12 days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. They did not find me disputing with anyone in the temple or stirring up a crowd either in the synagogue or throughout the city. Neither can they prove to you the charge that they now bring against me. But this I admit to you, that according to the way, which they call a sect, I worship the God of our ancestors, believing everything laid down according to the law or written in the prophets. I have a hope in God and a hope that they themselves also accept. There will be resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. Therefore, I do my best always to have a clear conscience towards God and all people. Now, after some years, I came to bring alms to my people and to offer sacrifices. While I was doing this, they found me in the temple, completing the rite of purification without any crowd or disturbance. But there were some Jews from Asia. They ought to be here before you to make an accusation if they have anything against me. Or let these men here tell them tell what crime they had found when I stood before the council. Unless it was this one sentence that I called out while standing before them, it is about the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. But Felix, who was rather well informed about the way, adjourned the hearing with a comment. When Lysias, the tribune, comes down, I will decide your case. Then he ordered the centurion to keep him in custody, but to let him have some liberty, and not to prevent any of his friends from taking care of his needs. Some days later, when Felix came with his dry wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him speak concerning faith in Christ Jesus. And as he discussed justice, self-control, and coming judgment, Felix became frightened and said, Go away for the present. When I have an opportunity, I will send for you. At the same time, he hoped that money would be given him by Paul. For that reason, he used to send for him very often and converse with him. After two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus. And since he wanted to grant the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, so we talked about some of this yesterday, but um, as I was trying to sum up a whole lot of stuff, we, we skipped over some other stuff. So um, one thing that sort of strikes me in this reading is, so you may remember, um, or maybe you didn't watch yesterday's, there are, uh, Paul has been arrested. There was an accusation that, first of all, they didn't like him because he was... So they said, preaching against the law and against the temple. They thought that he had brought a Greek man into the temple where he wasn't supposed to be. And that's that's the reason the sort of mob starts up and they try to beat him up. Uh, Paul is arrested sort of to stop this um, this beating, right, uh, to protect him to a certain extent. And because the uh, centurion guy thought that, the Roman guy thought that um, he was some other insurrectionist. He wasn't. Um, so then they bring him before the Sanhedrin, and he starts an argument basic, basically between the Pharisees and the Sadducees about the resurrection of the dead. Now, he, uh, there were a group of people who undertook an oath to kill him, which we talked about a little bit yesterday, um, the sort of idea of if you're on the side where you think that you should take a solemn oath to God to not eat until someone dies, you know, maybe, maybe consider your motives. This is found out, um, and so what we have here is that the guard summons two of the centurions and goes and sends Paul to Caesarea. Now, the thing that we sort of crossed over yesterday, but it's interesting, is look at the retinue that is sent with him. He sends 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, 200 spearmen, and providing mounts for Paul to ride. He is well, heavily guarded. This is, you know, sort of the might of the Roman Empire. This is the reason why there is a Pax Romana, because they are willing to use violence. But interestingly enough, this violence is being used for the benefit of Paul. He's getting safe passage 
to Felix, the governor in Caesarea, the current governor. Um, and he is being protected by the institution, by the hegemony, by the empire, um, which is just kind of an interesting thing, an interesting juxtaposition. Um, one of the things that is really unique about Paul is he has this Pharisee upbringing, right? He is well-versed in the law. He is well-versed in, you know, especially the sort of Pharisaical uh, particular take on the law, all the Talmudic sort of um, writings and all of, all of these sorts of things, right? Zealousness for the law. But he's also a Roman citizen. He is a dual um sort of a dual citizen. He lives in both worlds. And both of them are able to help him at different times. Um, so that's it's just kind of an interesting thing. And as we consider, what is our own um, intersectionality? Intersectionality is a term that was developed by womanist theologians. Uh, womanist is specifically black or, or African um, feminist thinkers who recognize that our, our identities are a multitude of different things. And they interact with each other differently because of those other things, right? So the experience of, say, a black woman is not just the experience of a woman. It's not just the experience of a black person. It is both of those, right? They, there's a sort of feedback. And so the way that a, a black woman is treated is different than a white woman, is different than a black man. Um, you know, if she is also queer, right? There's another sort of intersectionality or straight or, or poor or rich or, you know, all of these sorts of things sort of intersect and, and they all kind of feed feed on each other they they interact with each other they have to do with um they they have effect on how we are received either good or or badly this is part of who paul is right he is a roman citizen so he gets this protection of a roman citizen and he uses the protection as a roman citizen to effectively speak against the empire of rome he is speaking for the kingdom of god um, so it's just sort of an interesting juxtaposition. He is being protected in this case against his own people who are zealous for the same law that he is zealous for. Um, we find ourselves in these interesting places sometimes in a crossover of all sorts of things, right? Today is um, Mother's Day. It's also Ascension Sunday. Those are two things that may or may not kind of go together. We'll see how that works in my sermon later today. Um, by the way, just a reminder, I'll say this at the end. Our service today will be at Chinese Presbyterian Church at 11 o'clock and luncheon afterwards. So join us for that. Um, yeah, so, so all of these sort of different interactions. Well, Felix receives him and um, receives there uh the jewish lawyer tertullus along with ananias the high priest and they give their charge against paul which is basically um buttering felix up which we talked about a little bit um but the charge is basically he can corroborate all of this stuff that we're saying against him ultimately the charge against paul is almost exclusively circumstantial. They're saying, well, he's saying these things against our people. He's saying these things against the law. He brought this guy with him into the temple um, and everybody knows about it. So go ahead, you know, and ask him about it. They're so confident in the way that they see Paul that um, they think that he's going to back up their charge, right? But his defense is yeah i'll cheerfully make my defense yeah i've been zealous for my people i've been zealous for our law i've done all of this stuff the only thing that they can really lay against me um 
because I was at the temple. I was undergoing a rite of purification. I was following the law. I didn't take that guy into the temple. The only thing maybe they can charge against me is because I mentioned the resurrection during the Sanhedrin trial. Like, that's the only thing. Um... He is showing that his, how he has conducted himself, he's not going around causing arguments and starting fights. He's trying to do what he's supposed to do. And sometimes the, you know, there are times when accusations come against us and they are unfounded. Sometimes accusations come against us and it's not us it is some sort of caricature of us that someone has constructed and in the end of the day the defense of that is like if they just have a, a bad view of me i don't know what to tell you you know here here are the things that it, it could have been but here are the things that i've done right we also can fall into that trap we can think of other people in ways that are caricatures. We can think of other people um, not based on who they are in actuality, in the intersectionality and the complexity of they, who they are as a human being, but as this sort of one-dimensional one thing. We are called to relationship, which is to understand someone and to sort of get to know them more and more each day and each moment, because each day and each moment we learn and grow. And sometimes, hopefully, right, we respond to things differently than we would have a year ago or five years ago or 20 years ago or 40 years ago, right? Because we're learning and we're growing and we're developing that is the hope. So when we are connected to someone in relationship, whether they be a spouse, whether it be a friendship, right? That relationship develops and grows. We are surprised by them and the way that they take things sometimes. Or as you encounter new experiences, um, the way that they're going to respond or participate or whatever it is may be different. It may be surprising. It may be something that you uh, would have not guessed because it's a relationship with a living, actual human being, not some sort of picture idea of them. These people are holding up a charge against Paul which is ultimately based on a mischaracterization of who he is. And so his defense is, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. They, they've got a bad view. They don't understand what I'm actually doing. So Felix is, is well informed about the way. He understands this sort of stuff. So he says, okay. You know, there's not enough here. Well, we'll wait until Lysias, the Tribune, comes down to decide your case. Well, it turns out eventually, um, uh, does, does Lysias ever come? No. Um, he keeps him around for a while, Felix de does. Keeps talking to him, keeps speaking to him. Um, the There's an editorial note that maybe he's he's trying to get money out of Paul. And that doesn't seem to happen. And then a new governor um, succeeds him, Portius Festus. But Felix just keeps Paul in prison because it makes the Jewish authorities happy. They don't like him again. So Paul has been for two years in the in Caesarea in um, basically the the prison or the prison house of uh, Festus and will now be heard by, no, by Felix. He will now be heard by Festus and we'll get to that in a bit. But for now, let's join our hearts together in prayer. O Christ, after your resurrection, you appeared to your disciples. You breathed on them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You gave joy and exaltation to the whole creation. 
Through your victory we pray to you, hear us, Lord of glory. O Christ, after your resurrection, you sent out your disciples to teach all nations and to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You promised to be with them and us until the end of the world. Through your victory, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord of glory. O Christ, through your resurrection, you lifted us up and filled us with rejoicing. Through your salvation, you enrich us with your gifts. Renew our lives and fill our hearts with joy. Through your victory, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord of glory. O Christ, you are glorified by angels in heaven and worshipped on earth. On the glorious feast of your resurrection, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord of glory. Save us, O Christ, our Lord, in your goodness. Extend your mercy to your people who await the resurrection and have mercy on us. Hear us, Lord of glory. O merciful God, you raised your beloved Son, and in your love you established him as head of your church and ruler of the universe. By your goodness we pray. Hear us, Lord of glory. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. By his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Grant us so to die to sin that we may evermore live with him. In the joy of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. As I mentioned, today we have worship at Chinese Presbyterian Church at 11 o'clock with a luncheon afterwards for Mother's Day. So join us for that if you can. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. Our reading came from the New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition. You can watch on YouTube, listen on Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, and sign up for a daily email on Substack. Thanks for joining me. Have a blessed day.